These are just horrible things. Horrible things for jockeys and horses, but uh, great things for public sometimes. And the betting goes on. Here's John McCurry. 25 favourites have won the 2,000 guineas this century, four at odds on, and for a few moments I go, I thought Shadid was not going to be odds on. It went 11 to 10 on, two bets of 3,300 to 3,000 came in, it's now 5 to 4 on. Bookmakers want to get Shadid, it's not that there's anything wrong with a the horse, they think, it's just that they want to get money in their books and there's not much money for anything else. It's 6 to 1 bar, that's Bayern, and then 10 to 1 bar, the 2, which brings in Bass and Thwaite, fluctuating around the 9 to 1 chance. Lanfranco's 10 has touched 14, Lanfranco, over the oceans, out for 10 to 1 over the ocean. Carla Dancer back to win a quarter of a million pounds. Ladbrook say this morning at 50 to 1 is a 25 to 1 chance that I've seen double carpet 33. Best of the rags is supreme leader at 40 to 1 supreme leader. I'll have a quick word to people in Australia who watch us. It's live there. It's nearly midnight in Australia. You come over here and you speak to me on the race course, say you think I'm a lunatic. Scott knows better. Well, he's getting a chair. It will be the horses that get the chair in just a few minutes' time. There is Chance in a Million, who I'm afraid has about that chance. Hasn't run this year. Uh, ran uh, four times last season and was actually beaten by Mr. Jay-Z. He was well beaten in our last race, so he will not win today. He may win this season, but he won't win today. I can guarantee you that. Behind him, Comrade in Arms is an interesting one, because he's won this season. He's by Brigadier Gerard, who won the race when he beat Norreef in 1971, perhaps the best 2,000 guineas run this century, or one of the best, certainly. This horse won earlier this year at Maison Lafitte, beating River Drummer, but on the line through that, he isn't actually good enough to beat Lan Franco, because Lan Franco had River Drummer behind him in the uh, Futurity last year. But he has, he has actually won this season. He's obviously fit, and he's been brought over from France, and a French horse won in 1972 when Freddie Head rode Zeno. Written by Gérard de Brook, who we don't see much over here, but he's a very uh, competent uh, Frenchman and very very organized at Longshore but Shadid is not in the parade he's going down going down early Walter a surprise here or was that always the plan um, no I mean uh, uh, he's, uh, he's just going down there nice taking it in well he's certainly going down smooth enough but well, actually looking there underneath the 14 mark it looks as if there's a, a, bit, a little bit of sweat beginning to show there we're obviously going to press you about <laughs> problems, but he is, he is certainly that sweat, isn't it, there? Actually, funny enough, it looks almost as if it's a bit of... No, it is sweat, I thought it was a bit, another bit of cloth. <laughs> but a wee bit of sweat on him. Just a little bit there, yeah. I think it should be pointed out uh, that Dijinsky, who, of course, Leicester Road, in 1970 to win the 2,000 guineas, in uh, 1970, the sire of uh, Shadid, he was very nervous, horse, much more nervous than Shadid, and indeed, uh, he used to not be able to do... a. A preliminary canter, you always used to have to go and work straight away. So there are high metal family, the Nijinskis, and this one is certainly now anyway, whatever happened in the parade, he looks pretty relaxed now, Walter. Oh, I mean going down lovely there, isn't it? I mean beautiful lovely and settled, taking it all in. Just look at the way he's moving. So Shadid goes down. And the others turn to do that bit in the parade. That's a likely pacemaker, Northern Chimes, well behind in the free handicap. The only thing he'd like to do is to bowl along in front of him, Walter. Yes, uh, it would be nice, uh, you know, if to, uh, and, and let's hope that it's not a, a messy race and for something to set off and make it a nice gallop and, and everyone have a fair chance. Pacific Gold also likely to make the running because he was actually, after all, bought to be pacemaker for a colour dancer who'll need at least a mile. He certainly likes to use the stamina suit. That's Pacific Gold, who ran here in front of us here, Pacific Gold, with Tony Ives. He ran here over five furlongs. He's in no way guaranteed to get to a mile except as he has a horse box but he's, he's fast enough over five and six furlongs he ran well last, last season without actually winning six times and uh, he ran quite well in his re re in reintroduction he was behind but ran on quite strongly over five furlongs and the idea originally was him to bowl so I'd be surprised if he doesn't jump out stall 13 which would be good it means there's a good pace along the far rail there's Qualitaire Flyer well there's C. Senor ran quite well. He beat C. Senor in last time out. C. Senor ran quite well in the last race. On that form, he's somewhere near to ban, if you interpret it strictly, but most of us feel that it's probably more likely to be the 200 to 1 that his starting price is, represents about his chance. But he could run quite a bit better. Of the 200 to 1 shots, I think he's by far the most preferable, but that's not saying that much. Here's the betting. 
Shadid, the 5 to 4 on favourite. Bern, 6 to 1, opened up at 4s. Over the Ocean, 9 to 1, opened up at 7s. Bassenthwaite and Lanfranco both at 10s. Carla Dancer, 20 to 1 from 25s. And Officio Steady at 40 to 1. Supreme Leader, 50 to 1 from 40s. Royal Harmony and Comrade in Arms, both 100 to 1. Northern Chimes, 150 to 1 from 100. And Pacific Gold, Quality Flyer and Chance in a Million, all at 200 to 1, all 14 show. So it's a gloomy old day, but it'll be hot excitement soon. That's Supreme Leader, who ran well to win last week at Sandown. Before that was uh, beaten by Walter in the Woodditton Stakes, but ran quite well that day. Must be quite a tough customer, this. Yes, um, you know, he's only run twice, and I know Philip Robinson thinks quite a, quite a great deal of him. Um, you know, he was second in a good race here, the Wood Dippen, and then he went on to Sandown and won. Seemed, when he got to the front, he, he seemed to run quite uh, kind of lazy and, and needed, to be, needed to be kept up to his work. Not the greatest of freest of movers, actually, just looking at him there. No, he's... <laughs> went down a bit funny. Well, let's hope he comes back all right, but he must be not throwing his toe, toe quite as relaxed and as easy as Shadid. Walter, at this stage, you're all cantering off down to the start. The, the uh, stands are all behind you. That's Royal Harmony, but how much are you aware that a big race is coming up, or at this stage have you sort of put it out of your mind still? No, this, this, this is the easy part now, and, you, know, this is, and, you know, you're down there and the parade's over and, um, you know, you just, you don't realise what's going on back here and, um, as I said, the nerves are gone by now. Well, I wonder well, Michael Hill's got any nerves. Royal Harmony looks relaxed enough there, the 13. He ran well at the end of last season. He finished the close third in the Royal Lodge Stakes, so the Kazam's run slightly defranchised that form, but he hasn't run this season. He's a bit more of a derby horse, really. He's had a pulled muscle, but uh, Barry Hills' his horse is beginning to run into form. It'll be a big surprise if he's capable of actually winning water. I would have thought so. They, they do think a great deal of him, but it's asking quite a lot to come straight into the guineas and, and go, you know, go there with a good chance. So it's still strong on Shadid. Here's John. The bookmakers on the rails and on the boards were like those ghastly synchronized swimmers. You know, everything exactly the same. Take five to four. Take five to four on that was Shadid. But one of them has at last broken ranks and dived in the water. Six to five on they're calling now. So you can bet six to five on Shadid. It's 13 to two bar. That brings in Ben. Very weak Ben's been from four to one. It's because there is no money for Ben that Shadid has not even gone to a bigger price. It's in places 10 to 1 bar the two. Over the ocean is the strongest. 10 monkeys I've seen for over the ocean has come in. Also, I can see some money too for Carla Dancer. Quite tight at 25 to 1. Um, the other 10 to 1 chance, Basson's weight. That's quite right, weak, Basson's weight. But it says 6 to 5 on their calling. Some are going 5 to 4 on Shadid. They're not quite like synchronized swimmers, but almost as bad. Well, there is Shadid. In 1970, there were 14 runners. Dijinsky won it. Sire of Shadid. There are 14 runners today, so will history repeat itself? And of course, Lester Pickup was on board Nijinsky that day. I wonder what he's thinking, Walter. How jammy he's, he's luck is, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, you, you never know what's going through Lester's mind, but uh, obviously he's given me a lot of great thought and uh, working a few things out to himself. How different is he before the start of a classic? He's the greatest classic jockey of our time, perhaps of all time. How different is he before a classic to an ordinary race? None. There's no difference. You know, every, takes every race the same. Uh, you know, he never changes. Well, he's, he doesn't worry too much. <laughs> he doesn't. He and Pat Henry seem to be swapping some civilities there anyway. Whatever mm. happens in the next few minutes. What? What? What sort of? I mean. The chatter goes on, but you're presumably thinking in the back of your head as, as well all the time. Oh, sure, you know, you, you're always thinking. Um, but, uh, but the boys, you know, they always have a chat amongst each other and find out what's going on. And They've had a long canter down here, but presumably it's, it's, it's not that cold. They're standing completely still now. There's no problem with getting breath back or whatever for a horse. No, no, provided they don't go down too fast. <laughs> um, but no, they, they, they all went down in their own time, and uh, they've got plenty of time down there anyway. That's Ban and Willie Carson. Now, Willie's 
Two heads of the draw. Willie's drawn six. Leicester Pickard on Shadid is drawn ten. And the Bassethwaite's drawn fourteen. So the fancied horses are over this side, over the ocean, drawn eight. Are over towards the far rail. As we said, uh, Pacific Gold and the Northern Chimes. Uh, Northern Chimes is drawn nine. Are drawn over the far side as well. So the pace is all likely to be pushing it up the far side. Uh, I would have thought so, yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think you find something might be dropping in in front of them, you know, them horses then, they'll be getting a lead. How much of an advantage or otherwise would you prefer to get along the rail? When you're coming towards the bushes and it's really beginning to happen, is that a help to go towards the rail if you're near it? Well, it's, it's nice to be on the rail, you know, um, you know, if it does come to a close thing, you, you can rely on it and uh, so, but, but you wouldn't go out of your way to get there. <laughs> Uh, Steve Corson on Land Franco. And here's John McCurry. Land Franco in shot there. 11 to 1. I've seen him one or two places, Land Franco, but he's generally one of the 10 to 1 chances. The others are over the ocean and Bassenthwaite. It's now 5 to 4 on Shadid. Absolutely solid again. Ladbrokes took all that 6 to 5 on. It cannot be returned better. It's got to be a 5 to 4 on chance, unless it goes up the arm 11 to 8 on. Still 6.5 bairn. Still a bit of money for Carla Dancer. 22 to 1 now is the price, Carla Dancer. But Shadid is solid support for this favourite. And the sun's come out up on the grandstand. I don't know, it's just beginning to pick up down there at the start. Lan Franco and Steve Cawthon hasn't run this season, but the Henry Cecil team, they certainly seem to have the knack of getting horses fit to run first time. And of course, Henry's father, Noel Murdis, used to win first time out in classics. Sure, I mean, you know, Henry's a very capable trainer, and you know, his record proves that. Um, he'll, he's, he'll have this horse in really good condition, and, you know, that's Royal Harmony, also hasn't been out. Chance in a million, the grey here. Without being a too disparaging, Walter, he is one of what John Rupert likes to call the rags in the race. He hasn't got any chance. How much of a worry are they to you that you know they're going to come back? Well, that's it, you see. If, if they're up there handy and you know, you're in behind and you, when you come to halfway and you're going to have to start looking for your room and things, it, it, it is a worry that they're going to come back, come, you know, especially if you're a bit tight and take you back and, and then you've got the problems. <laughs> I'll try not to, not, not to knock someone down. <laughs> Here's Betty. Shadi, the 5 to 4 on favourite, Bairn 13 to 2, over the ocean 9 to 1, Bassensweight and Lanfranco both at 10s, and Carla Dancer 22 to 1, Forties Bar. So there's Bassensweight, Pat Edery, on a hat trick in the 2000 Guineas. He's won the last two, but. Bassenthwaite hasn't seen to be quite El Grand Senor in his races. Pat Edry going into stall 14. It's right over on the far side. If Fitzio was to go in first. John Penny is down there. Has Fitzio gone in all right? Yes, he has, Bruff. Uh, quite nosebly. He went in quite some time for the others. The handler's just had a little bit of a job to get him in completely. But now we're just down to the last two. That's Bassenthwaite going in now. And then Steve Corton. Dan Franco will be the last to be installed. So the second's really ticking away now as we watch Steve Corson on Lam Franco. For this, the General Accident 2000 Guineas, of which the winning owner will receive just over £73,000. And so as I look across now, it looks as though they're all in and they're away. And as they expected, at Pacific Gold, the first to go on. Pacific Gold, the, the leader from Shadid, right in second place. Then comes Northern Chimes, that's the leading three. Just in behind them, Lam Franco. And then I can see Officio, and towards the rear of the field is Color Dancer, Quality of Flyer, and Royal Harmony. And so they completed the first furlong or so, and it's still Pacific Gold who takes them along, being followed by Northern Chimes, Shadid on the far side. Just in behind them comes Comrade in Arms. They're running now to the six marker. Tony Ives still in the lead with Pacific Gold and still being pursued by Northern Chimes. Then comes Leicester with the nose band on the far side on Shadid. On the near side, the white colours. Comrade and Arms, and with that order, it's back to Graham. Comrade Arms in the white jacket just pulling a bit free early on, but isn't Leicester in the right place at the right time? There he is, 
coming up on the inside of Pacific Gold, Northern Chimes in the orange jacket. Bairn makes ground over the ocean, makes ground. Supreme Leader tries to come with a run. Bassenthwaite with plenty to do, but begins to pick up with the cross belts. But as they come to the point just over two from home, Shadi kicks and goes, so it's Lester Figgard in the lead. Lester Figgard on Shadi, the leader from Bairn in second place, Pacific Gold. Then comes Supreme Leader, Bassenthwaite trying to get into top lead to close. They've got a furlong and a half to go, and it's Lester Figgard on Shadi in the lead from Bairn. The horse he could have ridden up on the outside, but Lester gives Willie a look round there and Lester has to shake up Shadid as Bairn throws down the challenge Supreme Leader is back in third and coming inside the final furlong with Shadid but Bairn is staying on very strongly up on the outside Shadid and Bairn from Supreme Leader down the centre of the track Shadid could just win this going up towards the line Shadid's going to win it Shadid Shadid from Bairn in a photo Supreme Leader third then Basson Wait 4 Royal Harmony 5 Pacific Gold 6 Lanfranco 7 Chance in a million 8 Quality Air Fly 9 over the ocean 10 then came Carla Dancer so Officio was last but one last of all was Northern Chimes and so the result of this the general accident 2000 guineas it's a win for number 14 Shadid owned by Maktoum Al Maktoum trained here at Newmarket by Michael Stout and ridden by Lester Piggott Lester's fourth win in the race and his 29th classic winner but he had to work officially it's a photo and also in that photo is Bairn, the horse he discarded, who was up on the outside of him. And there you can see in the maroon jacket, white sleeves, Bairn, owned by Sheikh Mohammed, trained here at Newmarket by Luca Kumani and ridden by Willie Carson. The other horse in that picture there is the third horse home, which is Supreme Leader, number 15. And what a cracking race he's run. This horse, Shadid, has won, but Leicester had to work very very hard indeed to get this horse home. Bairn battled. Let's review the closing stages of the history.